Okay, in the last video, what we finally figured out how to do was to create the carousel, grabbing our own pictures uh, and using uh, the scan deer function that we were uh, creating and that we've been using. And now if you look at the code, one of the problems that we figured out that we also now have is that we are declaring the function or creating the function here in the, in, you know, right here in a HTML document. And then if you go down to the bottom, we're also calling or using the function in that same document. And that's not really ideal. The whole reason really we'd want to make a function is so that it's something we declare once for efficiency so that we don't have as much overhead with the server. And then we can call it as many times as we want. Basically, the server loads, loads it up and, uh, and it's ready to go. So what do we need to do to get this thing to work more, I guess, efficiently? Well, what we want to do is we want to pull this function out, uh, the whole function. We want to pull this function out and we want to put it in an include file. And and we, you should have uh, already gone through some really basic tutorials about how to use a, a really simple include. Um, and so now we're going to do something that's same principle, but maybe there are some complexities that are, you know, just a little bit, a uh, little bit deep. We have to dive a little bit deeper. So, uh, really simply, what we can do is right here where it has this creating declaring function. All right, I'm going to take this whole PHP block all the way down to this ending part where I know that I'm ending my display images function. Okay, and I'm going to just cut that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to make a new file. And we're going to have it be a PHP file. And then I'm just going to get rid of all of this HTML doc type, all of that stuff. Okay, I'm going to just get rid of that right now. And I'm just going to paste what we have. All right. And I'm going to go up to the very top and I'm going to do some stuff that's sort of going to clean this up a little bit before we do anything else. And right up here, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a really quick note. I'm going to actually just get rid of this part where it says declaring the function. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to paste this so you don't have to watch me type it, is I'm going to announce that this is the functions page right off the, right off the bat. And then the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, I am going to, I'm going to begin display images function. All right. And if you've already used any functions, by the way, let's say that you've been working on uh, your project and this is just an exercise, um, you know, you can always, you don't want to create multiple different functions, uh, function uh, files. This is going to be called functions.php. You don't want to create multiple function files. What you want to do is you want to put all your functions in one functions file. So if you already have this functions page, you know, created, um, and you're going to later, right, not right now, but later, if you're going to sort of port what we're doing over to your project folder, then you want to make sure that you clean everything up and that you don't have multiple functions uh, files and things like that. Okay, so I'm going to also now go down to the very bottom and I'm going to make sure that it's really clear where that function is ending. And again, I'm going to paste this for you so that you don't have to watch me type again. Okay, and then this tells me that this is the end of that function so that later if I wanted to come down here, I could put some other new function, you know, that's going to get loaded. And that would be something that you would want necessarily on every single page to be available. Okay, so first of all, let's go ahead and save this. So we'll go file, save, okay, and pops up. And I'm going to, what I want to do is I don't want to just save this uh, file immediately just in the root level directory, what I want to do here is I want to create a new folder inside of my display images root level and we're going to call it includes like that and I'm going to save it inside of there. So we're going to call this functions.php. Okay, so now that's saved and if we go back over here where it says test03 we can come up to the top and I'm going to go up at the very top, even before the doc type. And I'm going to include 
So we got to do some PHP. All right. And I'll do include. I always go back. And we are going to go to the includes folder slash functions dot PHP. And what I'm going to do, I'm not going to save this as test 03. I'm going to go file save as. And we're going to do test 04. Okay, and I'm going to save that in my main display images here. So we'll go here and I'll save that as test 04. That way we still have our the last version's archive. Okay, all right, so I'm going to save that as test 04. And then let's just do a really quick check. And let's go to our web browser. And then if we go here and change this from test 03 to test 04, this should work the same. And you see, in fact, that it does. All right, and the reason is because all it's doing now is it's, and I can actually even refactor this a little bit and make it a little bit cleaner. Um, it's loading that function by including the file right here and what the file contents are going to be is that exact same script that we had already created, but it's just being loaded from a different page now. Okay, um, and so if I want to really, you know, do something different now, what you'll be able to see immediately is that if I were to copy this, let's just copy this whole thing. I could come up here inside, let's say, the head, for instance, and after the normal style sheet, I can call display images, and let's say instead of a uh, slideshow, we want it to be background. That, all right, and that's what, because that's what we called it. If you want to just double check and jump back over here to functions, we can scroll down and check what our switch case was, and you see it's asking in the case that we uh, use the argument of background. Okay, so that's the way that is. So if I were to save this right now, save that, we come back over here, hit refresh, and you see it automatically loads a, a random background image. If I hit refresh again, let's click that, and you see it's randomly grabbing a different background image each time, which is pretty cool. Okay, and then because we have that style sheet set up, so that it automatically does a background cover, this is what it's doing. So this is one of the ways you could call multiple things in the same page. And if you really wanted to get insanely crazy, what we could also do is we could call this again. And I'm just going to take this part out where it says use calling function. We don't need to remind ourselves of that anymore. All right. Uh, you, you can if you want to, but you don't have to. So I can take this whole thing and let's just copy it and let's just say that before we call for the slideshow let's say that we're going to uh, first of all let's do something different let's call the scripting one so that you can remind yourself that we can do multiples well scripting and uh, this time we will do lightbox let's say okay we'll save that hit refresh and it does in fact do the lightbox for us which is pretty pretty nice. Let's go this way. Okay, so it's working. And then you still get this and you're still getting your background image. And then the last one that we had, um, and we could put that maybe in between, let's say that we want, uh, let's say we'll, we'll keep it at, let's do content management. That's the one that we're missing. And this one, um, is going to be image. I think it was IMG, but we can double check really quick. And yep, it's IMG for our case test. Let's say save that, refresh, and you see it also is grabbing a random image. Every time I refresh the page, you see it gets something new here and it gets a random picture for the background. So that's pretty nice, right? Okay, so all of those things are working. Now, one of the things that we need to take a really quick look at, though, that's sort of problematic, is if we do, um, let's go here, let's right click and inspect the element. One of the things you're going to see that happens is that every single time um, we 
use something right now with jQuery, what you'll see happening is that it's going to actually load. You see up here where I'm kind of hovering with my mouse. Um, in the code view, in the inspector, it's loading the, the entire jQuery minified version of you know the whole library. And then it loads the lightbox.js. And then down here, when we call the carousel, it's also loading that same jQuery file again. So like every time it loads that huge library, it's just a lot of extra load time. And it makes everything run really less efficiently pretty inefficiently in fact and if you can imagine we could also even do something like this where we actually have two lightbox things in a row or they don't even have to be in a row like one could be down here right and so let's say that uh, this one is going to be the responsive design lightbox okay let's save that let's refresh and then you'll see we've got a light box up here. And then if you scroll down, we have another light box for a different gallery here. Well, if we look and see what ha is happening, you'll see that it's not only is it calling the jQuery library, but it's also calling the jQuery, excuse me, it's calling the lightbox.js file. And then down here again, it calls both of those things again. So every time that we would call that, it would load that file. So let's say that you have a page full of galleries with lightbox stuff. Well, the problem is that it's going to load that every single time. And so we need to figure out a way for that not to happen. Um, and so let's jump back to our code and take a peek. And actually, you know what, let's jump back here really quickly. There's something else that I wanted to show you too. And I don't think I scrolled all the way down the page, but look what look what's happening right here. It's doing something very weird. So you see, I'm calling this lightbox gallery, it's fine. I'm calling this lightbox gallery, it seems fine. But then if you just keep on going down, it's doing this weirdo thing, right? If we click on it, it it's doing something very strange. It comes here again. And what you'll notice is that if you were to right click this to try to inspect it and see what's going on, you'll notice down at the bottom, it if you sort of start to dissect it here, let's collapse some of this stuff and look and see what its parent is. And then you'll start to see something that's uh, kind of a common thing down here. See what you've got here is you've got a div ID lightbox overlay. Okay, first thing you should notice is that ID equals lightbox overlay. You'll notice that two lines down, again, is another ID of lightbox overlay. Same is true for this one, where it says ID equal light, equals lightbox. Down here, ID equals lightbox. Well, you should know that an ID is only really supposed to happen one time on a page. And so what that should tell you is that because we're calling the JavaScript twice, not only is it sort of you know, not a great practice, but also it's going to do something weird like this, where it's trying to create two target IDs, well, actually, in this case, four target IDs, um, where two of each are being duplicated. And so um, this is a problem. And so this is another reason that we actually need to go back to that script. I just wanted to point this out in case you see this happening at the bottom of your page and you think something's wrong. It's happening on mine too, right? And the reason is because we're triggering that JavaScript twice and it's creating these these target IDs. This is like the, the dummy overlay um, and it doesn't know what to do with this because it's happening twice. So Anyway, just so you understand, that's what's going on. Um, so let's just jump back here to functions. And uh, we're going to look over at our, at our page here. And you'll notice um, that the first thing we've got here is our case image, you know, for when we call an uh, image argument. Well, random image, we, we're not using JavaScript, so we don't need to worry about that. And then here we're calling our case for background image. Well, this is really just a bunch of CSS. No JavaScript. We don't need to worry about that. And then we get down to our lightbox case. And this is where we actually need to start paying closer attention. In the next video, I'll show you how to write a conditional statement using global variables. 
to see whether or not it's been called, and if not, to call it. 